Well, welcome back. This is the third of seven videos looking at chapter two of Wheeler's most excellent book on risk management. And what we're going to do here is actually expand on the readings within chapter two or expand on the material within chapter two and look at cultural theory design. So uh, the uh, uh, we're, we're starting to look at this article formulating information uh, systems risk management strategies through cultural theory, right? A uh, little read here. And what we're going to do during this particular video is just set the context of how this all works together. So, if you were thinking about a, 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 a traditional risk management program, and again, we're relatively early in the course, so you don't even know what that looks like, but this is a kind of logical way of, of what you might uh, set up that process. So, you would have some initiation goals uh, around what's the context that we're doing, what's the scope who's going to be on the team and what methodology are we going to use. And in this course, we'll explore at least four different frameworks or methodologies for use. But during that initiation phase, you're kind of making those four principal decisions. Once you do that, you move into a risk analysis phase. And in that risk analysis phase, you're going in and saying, okay, what what's the risk that's out there? We have to estimate that risk, uh, and then we have to evaluate uh, that risk. Uh, and then based on that process, we go into a risk mitigation. We now know what the situation is, what assets we have out there, what vulnerabilities we have out there, what threat we have out there. All of that helps determine the risk. Then we've identified, estimated, and evaluated that. So we've got a current state. And from there, we move into risk mitigation, which is one of the kind of four action verbs associated within risk management. <clears throat> we'll spend more time on that later on. What we're doing there is prioritizing, well, what controls can I put into place? Can I have longer passwords? You know, can I, uh, do I need to buy another firewall or an intrusion detection system? Do I need to configure some of the education approaches uh, differently so that the uh, folks that are working at the uh, enterprise uh, understand security better and can react to, say, a phishing attack or a malware attack? Anyway, those are the kinds of controls. So we have to prioritize which controls we put into place evaluate them and you know the degree to which they're going to uh, reduce risk once we've made some choices implement those controls and then monitor and evaluate how effective they are um, over time and as I've mentioned in previous videos what we're trying to do is get our, our residual risk the risk that remains after we implement uh, these controls to an acceptable level and we'll use the term risk appetite uh, later on in the course to, to evaluate that so this gives you a sense of, a, of a, a, a process, and you may be thinking, okay, Dr. Carver, that makes sense, uh, but what does cultural theory have to do with that? And the answer is, well, you got to wait three more slides, but we're going to get to it. Um, and so, yeah, 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 we've, we've talked a little bit about the components here. Within that risk identification phase, we have to go out and identify our assets, identify threats and vulnerabilities. Makes sense. As we're doing our risk uh, estimation, all still within that uh, analysis phase, we're, we're, we're doing quantitative and qualitative uh, analysis. We're looking at what are our options for treatment, how much tolerance do we have for risk within the organization. And there we have those four verbs I mentioned on the previous slide. This idea, can I transfer the risk to someone else? Can I accept the risk? Can I avoid the risk? Or can I reduce the risk um, uh, within my uh, organization? And then finally, as we're looking at this, um, um, we're, we're going to have to design, implement, and monitor in that last state um, the, um, um, of risk uh, mitigation uh, to try to address it. So we have to establish some security mechanisms, look at what current controls we have in place, what additional ones would we want to add uh, in the design phase. In the implement phase, we have to apply those controls, do the whole resource management of space, time, money, people, associated with this and then go train people on it and educate them on the new controls that are in place, be they a technology control or a uh, policy control or education training and awareness approach. Um, and then we have to monitor it over time. So as you look at this, again, all of these pieces kind of structurally fit together, but you've got a challenge here. When you go to actually roll this out within a real organization, you have this crazy thing like people, humans, uh, that are out there. And those, uh, what the article uh, uh, suggests is that those people are unaware of security measures. They're not very good at estimating risk. 
uh, within the organization. Um, and because they put different emphasis on different risks, they come to different risk decisions that may or may not align with what the organization views that risk or what the risk management team or the security team views that risk. And so what ends up happening is you have cognitive distortion occur, where you're viewing a common occurrence but reaching different conclusions on the appropriateness of those additional controls. And so what we're going to do, we've talked a little bit um, about the design and the implementation of those controls. We're now going to talk about in the uh, next uh, video how people relate to those different controls and how they react to those controls. And we're actually going to uh, split humans into kind of four different groups uh, as they're viewing these risk management approaches or information security approaches. All right, well, very good. That brings us to the end of this third of seven videos looking at Chapter 2 in Wheeler's Most Excellent Risk Management book. And uh, what we're going to do next lesson, as I just mentioned, is get into cultural theory and how people perceive risk management controls.